so web one the read only web you know you talk about stati- static websites that you see that you see typically in the 90s to 2005 so i'm a i'm a millennial so i saw a lot of that when i was growing up close to zero interaction between users and uh, the creators are typically developers who build websites mostly with information that's packaged in text or image formats so that's how we classify web 1 and then you move on to web 2 and you get the read and write web that's where people can participate more so that's the that's the, the participation in the creation process that's the big step up and you don't really have to be a developer to be a creator and um so that that's that's what i would say is the the differentiator between web 2 and web 1 but most of the web traffic that you see and the value that is generated is all controlled by a few top companies and then comes web 3 which i feel it's the place for the creator economy if you are a creator or anybody in general web 3 is your place because i see it as the read write own web which basically replaces all the centralized platforms but this time with open protocols and decentralized community run networks that returns power and ownership to the users so yeah that's how i would that's how i would segregate the three the three versions of the web a big hallmark of of web3 i would say is uh, the feature of decentralized services and authority that's powered by the blockchain and that has really really strong real world implications for people now let's look at nfts and how it's empowering artists that's already very well documented and then you look at DeFi, where users can tap into blockchain for enabling financial services outside the confines of traditional centralized banking infrastructure. And then we move on to decentralized applications, or dApps, as we call it. And now, these make use of smart contracts that can, that can allow service delivery in a very programmatic approach, if I can put it that way. And it's all logged into an immutable ledger, so without getting into any technical details. And then... Uh, let's look at DAOs, for example, you know, which can provide structure and governance in a decentralized approach. So the feature of decentralized services and authority, I would say, is uh, the raison d'etre of, 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 of Web3. Tezos is basically where the art is. You know, it's, it's, uh, uh, we have partnerships with different, some of, the, some of the most prominent art fairs in the world. So... Um, last month, we were actually, uh, Tezos actually had, a, had an exhibition at the uh, Art Basel in Basel. And in May, um, we, uh, Tezos had a gallery in Art Basel, Hong Kong, where the TZ APEC team was uh, also at. And in this gallery, we had about 20 artists, half of them were from Asia. And what this basically, it basically gave them the stage, a global stage, uh, you know, and some of the top NFT artists and, and the, the folks who were coming down also, they had the chance to learn more about NFTs and discover how, discover the fact that NFTs are basically the next frontier of art. You know, it's not really a, a rival of physical art. It's the next frontier. You know, it's 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 basically like a different dimension. It's a new dimension. If you look at uh, the, 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 the Tezos, the art community. So there is a Filipino artist. His name is Bion Calleja. And he was actually featured in uh, Art Basel Hong Kong in May. So... Um, he gives back to universities. So he, he's he gone to his alma mater uh, in Philippines, his university, and he's actually shared more about NFT. So this is this is exactly the ethos of the Tezos community that I'm talking about. And um, so I mentioned a bit about Art Basel. So we also, uh, you know, it's, it's also a big priority for us to to give this, these artists a stage. So in May, we were at Art Basel, Hong Kong, where uh, we had, more than we, we had about 20 artists from across the world 10 of them were from asia all featured in in uh in in an exhibition and you know art basel is like one of the most prominent art fairs in the world so um and then in january we were we were involved in singapore art week so these are these are in asia across the world uh in 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 barcelona um in art basel basel there's been a lot of uh initiatives like this from the wider Tezos ecosystem as well and then in terms of building projects, now um, Web3, its implications are massive. So 
uh, there's a lot of efforts to empower founders, to empower builders, to create Web3 projects that have really good implications. So from an APEC perspective, so TZ APEC and, and Tezos India, they, we've collaborated on a grant uh, program called the EGG, the Ecosystem Growth Grant, where you can get resources to build your projects on, on Tezos. And um, with an extension of that is the newly launched incubator program that we have. So what this means is that, okay, so once you get a grant, the grant lets you gives you enough for uh you know to 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 develop the prototype you know to 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 explore the project an incubator program actually equips you with the commercial acumen uh to the top of my of my mind is sweaty nfts now sweaty nfts is uh, was launched by sarisa kojima now what she's built is essentially a no code tool set that simplifies generative art uh, creation, you know, and um, so what this means is that artists they can generate up to ten thousand unique, randomly generated artworks. They can launch their collections via marketplaces, on uh, on on the Tezos blockchain, for example. So, um, you know, it's 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 really democrat democratizing art over here. You know, you don't need to to be very you didn't don't need to have the technical knowledge. Uh, this tool will be there to help you. A mindset of curiosity is very, very important because this is new and um, anything that's new requires change and anything that requires change, you know, it gives resistance to people. So um, once once you get over that barrier, then it becomes very easy to grasp new concepts. Like we, we look at NFTs, right? Art is something that's, that's um, carried out everywhere you know, tier one cities, tier two cities, tier three cities of any country uh, all across Asia. Um, you know, computer science is such a big, big part of education at the moment. So, uh, you know, it's very, very important that that uh, Web3 uh, folks or the next generation, for example, are very well equipped. <clears throat> and, and one example is that we look at institutions, for example, and one institution that's doing a really, really good job at this is NUS Computing. So NUS Computing, they've actually formed a partnership with TZ APEC, for example, where they equip uh, their, their students with, uh, you know, real-world blockchain uh, workshops. We get practitioners from the industry coming in to share more, uh, you know, to, to, to mentor a lot of these students. So that's uh, definitely something that's very important, learning from industry experts. Mm -hmm.